It's Sandra here from Creating in Spain. I'm going to start off with an apology. I did this video, it's going to be a busy, oh gosh, I can't even talk probably this morning. I did this video on concertina card um, earlier today and I posted it along with a blog. Now I apologise for anyone who has looked at that because first of all I did it and then I realised I'd made a mistake. And so I did a new one and I deleted what I thought was the old one. And what happened? I deleted the wrong ones, didn't I? So the wrong video went up, the wrong blog went up, and the right ones where everything had gone as it's supposed to have gone and gone correctly were the ones that got thrown away. And I'd also cleaned my computer before I realised and I'd lost it all. So it's just been one of those mornings. But I have redone the file. I have got it made and photographed so I know that it now is working as it's supposed to work. And my instructions are going to be amended. So my, apologi my apologies if you did download the incorrect items. Okay, so this is what we're trying to do. A concertina card of standing up letters or it could be trees or thieves or anything else that you want to make stand up but this is basically the way that it's done for letters now you notice that i have here my letters and they're surrounded with a box pretty much and there's a very good reason for that and i'm going to show you what happens you have your phrase and you size it to a nice easy size that you can remember and you draw a box the same size. You select the both of them and you centre them up to each other so that they're fitting inside each other. They should have been exactly the same size, they're not slightly different by the looks of it so I'm going to make this a bit of a closer fit. I might have to use the nudge bars to make it fit properly because it's important that these top and bottom lines match up in particular. Right, okay, that's better. Now, what we have to do, uh, I'm going to take this and I'm just going to cut it, or copy it and paste it to a, a fresh page simply so it's easier for me to show you what I'm doing. So, okay in place. Here we go. So I'm going to move it over here and I'm going to zoom right in so we can really see what is going on here. Okay, so now I have my frame and if I was being particular about this I would adjust the individual letters to make sure that they were being exactly where they should be in that frame. But this is demonstration purposes and I'm not really going to be too worried about it. Now, what I need to do is to make sure that this top line is the one that really matches. That is the really important one. So I'm just going to move this down just a fraction. No, nope, move it up, sorry. There we go. Actually, I'm going to ungroup this because I want to make that O the right size. It's not come out the same size as the rest of the letters. So I need to break it apart and the O, yeah there we go and I'm going to make that a bit smaller and I move it down Ooh, it needs to be a bit smaller still oops a bit too much that'll do fine okay and now because this frame is slightly too wide I need to move that in a little bit There we go. Okay, I'm happy. In fact, I've now got a pretty good box. And just because I'm a perfectionist, I can't stand things that aren't quite right. I'm going to move it up slightly there as well. Okay. Now, if we were to cut all this out, obviously we'd have a gaping hole in our card, and that's not quite what we're intending to do. So, all we need to do with this now is to take a square eraser and just to erase the lines that are underneath the solid parts of the letters and the solid parts of the letters only, not the gaps in between the letters or the funny little holes that are cut out in the letters. 
just the solid part of the letters. And then you can group it all together and you've got your word as it needs to be. Because when it's cut out, just a quick one there, right. <clears throat> when it's cut out, what you will find is that all the weeding is basically done for you. So this will be weeded out. This middle bit here will be weeded out. And these bits are closed shapes, so they're not going to be there. And that's obviously a closed shape. So all these extra bits here that you don't want lying around in the background are going to be weeded out. And that is how to prepare your letters for the concertina card. So I'm now going to go back to my normal view, hit to window, and I'm going to go back to page one. Now in my previous video, the one that was decent that is, I showed you how to put regular uh, fold lines or score marks in your card. So if you don't know how to do that, then have a look at that video and that gives you a really easy way of how to do it. So the next thing that you need to do is to place these properly within your card. Now I had my card there and I have my score lines and basically what I did was I just took a great big chunk out of my score line and erased it. You can erase it with the eraser or you can just break it up and delete it. It's up to you what you do with it. So I've basically only got little score lines on either side. And you want to make sure that those don't encroach on your actual letters. They can encroach this box around them, but not the letters themselves. And then you want to line it up so that they are central horizontally to the card. And then for the vertical alignment, now what you might think is that you need to line these up so each of the one, the middle of the letters, is on the fold. Wrong. Don't do that. Line the middle one up so that that one is on the centre fold, on its centre. That's fine. But the one at the back, you want to place the letters high up so that they're almost right at the top of the card. And the one at the front, you want to make them lower so they're almost at the bottom of the card. This will ensure that when you fold your card and it stood up, because that's a mountain fold, a valley, a mountain, a valley, a mountain, your words are staggered so that you can see them, like cinema seats used to be. I don't know if they still are, I've been to the cinema for a long time. But like cinema seats, they're staggered so that the back is higher than the middle and the front, and the middle is higher than the front and lower than the back. And that way, when you look at the card, you get to see everything as it should be. So that is why they're placed like that. If you don't want to do individual letters standing up, what you can do is do an easier version. And if I just take another word and just write, hello, here we go. I'm just gonna make it a bit bigger so you can see it better. There we are. And I'll put some color in it just because it makes it easier for you to see. Right. You could go to Effects and Shadow Layer and you could make a nice big shadow on this, like so, all right? And what you could do is you could take your words, you could cut those out in card and you could just cut out the shadow layer. Now for this, it's really, really easy. All you do is you take a knife tool and you cut round about where the lines start to go vertical, so round about there. And then you would take that, you would break it apart, and you would remove that lower line. And then that bit is the bit that goes into your cutout. Now, a word of warning on this, if you want to do this as a print and cut, and you want this to be coloured, then you need to go back a step or two, like that, and you need to duplicate this bit here because once it is cut open with a knife, you can't fill it with a colour. So you have to duplicate it and that one becomes your print and cut print and then the one that you've broken open becomes your print and cut cut. You line the one over the other as you wish and you group them and then you put them into your card. Again, make sure that your um, 
score lines don't go into this area here because obviously that's your cutout and you don't want little nicks in that. But that's how you do it and you can do that with all sorts of shapes. It doesn't have to be lettering. Okay, I hope you found that useful. I'm going to give you the file for the happy birthday, darling. If you do cut it out, cut it out in a fairly heavy duty card. I cut mine out in a thin card because it's literally a practice run. So mine's a bit on the wobbly side. Um, but cut it out in a nice thick card and it will look really very effective. I quite like it. Um, even in plain white it looks quite nice and you could always just dot a load of bling over it if you like that sort of thing. But it's quite pretty. So I will give you an attachment for the file and I'll do that. I'll post that on my blog. Again, apologies if you downloaded the wrong thing. Please delete the old file if you've got it. But I think only about three people might have had a chance to download it between my uploading it and realising what a mistake I'd made. Okay, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.